There we go. Hello. Did you read my note? No. <laughs> I said, I'm here, open the door for the queen. <laughs> I hope I wasn't being too presumptuous. Not at all, but you know, what is it about queen that kind of gives me, ugh? you know what I mean? Well, it's, I think there's a lot of connotations with the past where there's a lot of queens that perhaps haven't been quite there for the people, but it, it's it's the idea, right, of the sort yeah. of the governing unit for a territory. Right. Oh, I like that. But let's find a new meaning for that that goes with all this. I mean, well, I mean, like it. It's just a concept. We're dealing with insanity, right? We're dealing with with uh, what's what's the uh, what's the term used? Illusions of grandeur. Like if anyone thinks beyond their means, everyone thinks they're in illusions of grandeur, right? Like. Oh. Oh, yeah. Who is Laurie to be the Queen of Saskatchewan? Uh, but then the thinking is, but if I was, what would I do? Create such a different methodology of how you approach things. The visionary hub then gets a context within this large, like you're, you're building the big hive for all the bees. And right. the visionary hub is one little hive. That's different from thinking, no, the visionary hub hub is the hive and I, I have this little hive here and that's all it's going to be kind of thing you know like yeah. think like do you understand what I sent you it's just like humans yeah. have a scope of thinking and what do we think is possible or probable mm -hmm. binds us to what we really can imagine that we're going to do and I think if there's anything that I do hopefully for people is to in increase their scope of thinking of what is possible by giving an infrastructure where anything could be created. Right. And it's exciting and new for people to get out of this old crap that we've been stuck in. Like, I like what you said here. You discover that most people have a certain scope of thinking. And then once it gets to their capacity of where they can go, then they just go to government. They give it up and government takes care of it. Instead yeah. of saying, we can, we are the government really. But we do have the capacity as individuals because Elijah, I'm going to tell you a little story about James Archer. Okay, James bought my insurance agency six years ago in June, this month, six years ago. And I went and saw him. He ended up after buying it, he's a type seven in the Enneagram. I love the kid. Lorianne is doing a values mapping event in Regina. I sent him a text. I go, James, I said, I think you would really like this. He went to it. He went to the whole event. I went to sign the deal for the sale and I said to him, hey, before I sign this, I want to see your values map you made. We had three of the same values on our map. And that aligned with me feeling this is the right move to make because uh, honestly, Elijah, when you build something and you know, when you build something from scratch and it gets handed over, it's your baby and you're going, are you going to take care of all these clients? Are you going to? And it just felt right. Not long after that, because I observed this young man, he's a beautiful soul. But he, everybody wanted a piece of him because he's a powerhouse and he had a big role in this organization, right? And he ended up alcohol, drugs, everything and went to Montreal and spent, um, he said 30 days, one month at a rehab there. And he said, so I went and saw him last Friday. I took a drive, went and saw my naturopathic doctor, Node Smith, who wants to meet you. And I went and saw Node and I went and saw James. Well, when, before James went to Montreal, he saw this building for sale out in the valley in Fort Capel. It's a place called Fort Sand, right on the lake. And he goes, oh my God, I want that. There's something bigger. So his mindset was at the time, because he shared it with me, he goes, was for corporate wellness. Uh, remember, an organization is only as healthy as the people within it. So that's what his thought was. But then he went away to rehab and he came back and said, that's what we need. We need a trauma slash substance abuse center. It's beautiful. You should see their, their big room that has a big screen that you pull down with big bucket chairs, living quarters for 40 people, like rooms for 40 people. Oh, little individual breakout rooms for counseling. Well, he, one of the rehab centers about an hour, not even an hour away in Indian Head, they had a fire. 
So they knew James Archer had this place because when he left to Montreal, it was a million dollars. When he came back from Montreal, it was still for sale for 600. So he bought it. So I kind of jumped forward. Sorry, I hope you're keeping up with me. And so Indian Head called him and said, would we, like, this is pretty confidential. So whatever you do, don't put this out there, okay? Okay. Would we be able to bring our people to your facility because we had a fire? So of course, it's quicker than he anticipated. He went to the town council. Guess what they said? <clears throat> went to town council again. Do you know what one of the reasons, the main reason is? You're going to devalue our real estate here. Humans and real estate and and you know like to me what it would bring to the community so here's a community of what 100 people fort san i don't even know it's called fort san there used to be a tb clinic there back in the day you know when they put people isolated with tb and um so now it's going to the level of government saskatchewan government and i said if this doesn't get passed by the government of saskatchewan then i'm going to be pissed off because if you guys are out there to say that you're here for the well-being of all, because you know Gabor Maté, right? He's from yeah. Vancouver. So yeah. Gabor Maté, the Aurora Center that my son is at, they use a lot of Gabor Maté's work there. And my son said to me, mom, this is such life skills. Why aren't we taught this when we're young? So James, so the last, James and I had lunch that day in the facility, he took me on tour and he goes, you know, Lori, because I know type sevens, they all, they live with a bit of anxiety because they live in the future. So he says, my wife told me, he says, Lori, my wife told me, he goes, James, if this doesn't work out for what you thought it was supposed to be, there's something better in the picture for you or this facility. <clears throat> so I said, if he changed it to uh a trauma center would they accept that you know because it's not drugs and alcohol it's trauma because really honestly Gabor Mate talks about he's doing the wisdom of trauma right now there's a film out the wisdom of trauma yeah. and it's like all that trauma comes from being that big yeah so if they did it that way without the word substance abuse on it yeah. would they accept it yeah that well, you know what? That just irks me. That's where the value of justice shows up in me and says, are you effing kidding me? So I didn't want to, like I said to James, he goes, you know, Lori, I said, you know how you thought it was corporate wellness? People from all over the world come here and spend time. I said, so if it's corporate wellness, James, think of yourself. You were put in the head position of this company that your parents started in their basement. Many years later, you're put on that role it was pressure on you, man. I said, how about if you could have went to a facility that was all about corporate wellness so that you could really find, but having, there's a lot of people that get in these big roles and they're pulled out in directions, they end up with some form of addiction. And whatever that be, Elijah, a substance or whatever, right? Yeah. So who knows? Maybe he goes, well, I don't know how to write programs. I don't know how to do, I said, the Visionary Hub, we have an actual principal. So she's all about, like, she's academics, but she doesn't like the school system, Carrie. We've got you that does mapping. And that's what I told him. I said, Elijah's out in Vancouver. He does this mapping that's so powerful for people to step back into their power. And I know when it's trauma, addiction, and addiction, it's this part of the brain, and it has to be reformatted. Yeah. Like neuro, what's it called? Neuro linguistic programming. Yep, it needs neuro. So if you start bringing a few of those type of modalities into there, plus the, a little bit of old paradigm stuff, because otherwise our corporation's going to come, that might be his purpose there. It's beautiful, Elijah. I didn't take any pictures, but, and then you walk out of their dining room, their dining room's humongous, you walk out of their dining room and you look out and there's the lake. It's on the other side of the road, but you see the big lake. There's something special about the valley in Saskatchewan. Wow. I know I got shivers while I'm telling you this story. Well, it just seems that, I mean, no matter what, right? I mean, people need healing. And if you can bring 40 yeah. people into that infrastructure, mm -hmm. 
and take them through a process and they come out and they're like vibed, hyped, doing, you know, they feel like they have some tools to go enter back into the world. I mean, maybe it's a nine month program, right? Like it, it, exactly. it, it sounds like, because so these things take time. They take time. Exactly. And what does a rehab center do for the government? I have a girlfriend of mine that lived here. She moved away. She was, um, she'd been in a bunch of rehab centers. She drinks and she'd sent me, she phoned me on Facebook the other night and said, Lori, I just want to tell you what an influence you've been on my life. Blah, blah. I'm feeling a mire or an influence. You're addicted. You can't get rid of your alcohol. But she says, you've all, I've always felt you cared. It doesn't matter what's going on in my life, but you care. So I said to her, she was going into rehab again. It's only a 21 day program. It's not enough time, Elijah. The government is spending how much money shipping people off to rehab, shipping them off to jail and prison where they're doing none of this self growth, personal development work at all. Yeah. At all. And they're wasting money like crazy. So Susan Oleski, she's she does the uh, Enneagram Prison Project in 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 um, LA in California, uh -huh. and it's called the Enneagram Prison Project. When I watch some of her videos wow. and stuff, and I see her and my teacher Russ Hudson sitting in a circle with the prisoners, I cry because I go, "Oh my God, these people have the most magnificent people around them." to find out who they really are because that book I told you that um that coach he's a re oh rehab not a rehab coach recovery coach you would really like him his name is Paul Noyles his book that he has out is the one that's called um did I send you a copy of it what's his name again Paul Noyles and his book is called Look at this. Can you see this? Mistaken idea. Oh, that's, that looks nice. But look at the sacred journey from addiction to awakening. Nice. And guess whose work he does? Nice. Gabor Mate. Nice. So now this is a guy. He was from Ottawa. He's in Saskatoon now where my sons live. I had coffee with him and he was the one that did our intervention for my son. And he lives in Saskatoon. He was like, get this. So talk about corporate. So he was Mr. Ottawa bodybuilder. He's been in movies as an actor. He showed us one of the movies and he was a multi-million dollar business owner. And he ended up on the streets of Toronto. Now he's a re uh, a counselor. Well, he runs his own company, but he, this book just came out a week before my son, before we hired him to be an intervention coach. And you know how I found him? Through Carrie's aunt, Polly Christiant. She's a shaman. She lived in Nelson, BC for years. And she looks just like Carrie. You'll think she's her sister. And Polly does lots of Gabor Mate. She's met him in person. She's done a lot of his work. And she's the one that said in 2007, Carrie brought her to my office to meet me and we had a bottle of wine and we just talked and we wrote dare to be you on a piece of paper with a bunch of notes. And when they left, Polly said to Carrie, you two stay connected. She knew we have a bigger purpose together. And it was Polly that said, I was feeling desperate. Polly goes, Lori, I will connect you to Paul Noyles. Paul phoned me within 10 minutes and I've never felt so much hope in my life talking to that man about what my son was going through. So I got lots going on, Elijah, and I'm getting connected into addiction and like the Aurora Center where my son is, is run by an Amer a guy from Winnipeg, but they also have one in St. Louis in the US. And it's a beautiful facility. And when I talked to James, he goes, I might be doing some work with Aurora. I thought, what? Like, what are the chances of that? So my son being at Aurora, he mentioned Paul Noyles to one of the head guys. And you know what the head guy said to Tyson? How do you know Paul Noyles? He's an amazing guy. He was shocked that Tyson would know Paul Noyles. Wow. So there's a big connection because when you meet my son, Elijah Tyson, ever since he was like 12 years old, he was so smart. 
but he would buy a pack of cigarettes and sell them individually. <laughs> but the unfortunate thing, it turned into drugs, <laughs> right? So he's sales, he's, and he, and, you know, not that he's been totally addicted, but he's been the last three times in the hospital, there's been, this last time was an overdose of cocaine. So huh. he's feeling he has no purpose. They were taken away from me when they were young. And my ex told me he would kill me if I ever tried to take them away. He what? died a couple of years ago. What? So those boys didn't grow up with me, right? And then I find out that, that my ex, who was an alcoholic, I never dreamt he'd hurt my boys. But Tyson, he found money up in Tyson's roof ceiling. You know how you have ceiling tiles? He found a wad of money because Tyson knew how to make money, right? You know what he did? Grab the wad of money, took out a few dollars, gave it to Tyson and kept the rest. And that's what he continued to do. What did the uncle do, the brother to the dad? He bought drugs from him. So there's the two males in his life. What influence was that? Huh. So I, I told Tyson, you're gonna, you guys are gonna meet each other, you and Tyson. Yeah, no, I, I look forward to chatting with him. I mean, I think, yeah. um, didn't he have a, a great hub factor experience? He had a fabulous hub factor experience. Well, ar arrange it. Like, let's let's have a chat. Let's, yeah. let's, once, let's... once he's out, he's still there and he's looking to talk to the owner to see if he can stay for two extra weeks. Because there's no doubt, Elijah, if that's the only world you've known since you were young, it's pretty scary to get back out into the real world again. Yeah. You know, so... What does he think about all what, with what with what you're doing? Oh, he he just goes, "Mom, what you're doing is unbelievable. What's going on in there?" He says, "That was unreal. This stuff is so big." So he knows he's a Sagittarian, born December thirteenth, and he's forty years old, and he's a male that's been through shit. So who makes a better person, Elijah, to coach and work with other people than someone that actually knows what you're going through? Right. Well, I, I'd love to meet him. Yeah. I'm going to link you guys up once he's once he's out. So he's he's in the program? Yeah, he's in the program and it's 45 days. And it's in Manitoba, five hours from here on Lake Winnipeg in a town called Gimli. It's a beautiful facility. It's called Aurora, A U R. O R A. And how many? What's its? What is its capacity? Um, I think there is eighty. Eighty. And have you talked to them? Well, I've talked. I talked to them when I got them checked in and everything, but I haven't talked to them about anything else. But I just know they're in conversation with James Archer. Okay. So talk about magnificence because i think when james thought he wanted to do like corporate wellness retreats and stuff i think he already knew what was going on for him being addicted and how those pressures can drive us to stuff for sure so i maybe he just has to change his like he's not going to get that that indian head rehab center in there likely because they'll find somewhere else because they have to be somewhere but He'll do something bigger than just rehab. I have a feeling. I don't know. I just have that feeling. So when he said, you know, I don't know how to write curriculum so that when you go to the government or you go to people or you go, how do you, when you go to companies, I don't know how to do that. And I said, I'm sure, James, it wouldn't be hard to find people to help write some form of a curriculum, like something that can be a big marketing whatever out there to them to the world of corporate you know it might be their ceos and their top executives coming out first because that's where it all starts the health of the end like i said if you're going into an organization and they're hiring people for thousands and thousands of dollars you go work with that team i want more sales i want more profit and the person at the top isn't willing to do some work then you know already there's a problem yeah what about, what about like a Saskatchewan CEO summit? Oh. Like all invite all the all the the CEOs of Saskatchewan to a visionary hub. Like you need oh. to, you need to have like a, a launch event that is so big. Yeah. In that, that location. Yeah. <gasps> now I get I'm getting goosebumps through my body. A visionary hub launch and we just rent the space from them. Yeah. 
and then it gets no one. Yeah. You need something to splash yourself on the whole province, right? We do. Yeah. Oh, that, that probably would be it. Yeah. And then we can bring in all, all the tools and bring the CEOs through and inflow matrix the Saskatchewan <laughs> world. <laughs> and how long would that be? What would be a time? Something. How about like a weekend? Like a well, I guess a weekend's more more. Uh, I was thinking a ten day summit. Yeah. Um, how about a ten day summit throughout the province? So in different areas. Yeah. Okay. Um, and sort of like have like you like that touring bus kind of thing, but just kind of yeah. like a, um. Like something that just ignites Saskatchewan. Yeah, yeah. Illuminates and then ignites. Ignites. Yeah. Uh, like next year, I guess, probably. Like, you know, this year is kind of like still blah, 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 blah. But next year, people are going to want to ignite. Um, you think in 2022, look at all the twos in that number. Yeah, 2022. And you total them all up. There's six, which is health. Um. You could have a 10 day summit that's online and offline. Well, we want, we, yeah, we want in person for sure, but you're right and put it online as well for the people that can't make it. But if we're doing Saskatchewan, let's say only to start with, uh -huh. I really think we could host it in that place and people will come from Prince Albert and all over because it's kind of central. Like if you look at a map of Saskatchewan I'm just going to pull one up because I, you know, I'm really enjoying this, Elijah, because you have patience like nobody I know. <laughs> Do you know, I have patience at my lifetime cycle, right? Like at some point I realized. I, got... <laughs> I know, I, I know what you mean. Okay. I am just looking for Fort Coppell and then I will show you um, Saskatoon Humboldt. Oh. Winyard, Yorkton, Melville. Oh, okay. So there's a there's a map of Saskatchewan. Right there. See okay. it? Okay, yeah. I'll, work, I'll point my finger now where there's Yorkton. Okay. Okay. Fork Pell's right. Oh, this one. Right there. Okay. So it is in the southern part of the province, there's no doubt. But the furthest really north people would come from would be Prince Albert and Prince Albert's there. Okay. So Prince Albert to Saskatoon is three hours and then another two to, it's only five hours. That's so what we, I think what we would do is we'd host it in one place so we would get mastered. And then we would have people coming from PA and here and there and there saying, we need you to come to us. Yeah. Then we branch out into the, going to the different areas but i mean it depends what happens with um james's space in fort Capel, because you know he might end up with something in there who knows i mean it just makes sense to you know we need something in the future to be a big launch point yeah and something for you to build towards and all yeah. the events can lead up to that kind of thing yeah to me that's now this some like this gets me excited yeah. All these little details that are going on right now drive me up the freaking wall. <laughs> they really do. And I, it has to be done. I understand that. It does. It drives me up the wall, though. Yeah, I know. I sent the girls a note today. Our Visionary Hub girls, the four. Yeah, I said to them, have any of you read this book, Never Eat Alone? And it's, it's Never Eat Alone and other secrets to success one relationship at a time. And I said, and Christy goes, no. And I said, it reminds me of our visionary hub. Any one of us can go out there and do what we do alone or in big letters, we, W-E, can do it together to shift the world, including, including each of our own worlds. Thank you ladies for being part of this heart to heart hugs times three. And then I sent this picture. Oh, nice. Very nice. Can you send and that Christy. to me? Yeah. Huh? Can you send that picture to me? I, like I will. Um, so anyway, the one that, that um, 
said thank you, that's great, or whatever made any comment was um, Christy. She's the only one that's re related to it. Like, I, there's no doubt her eight energy is powerful. Well, you guys need something big to aim at, right? So I think this could be it. I'm, hey, yes. You know, it's 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 like we, we got to get out of the small stuff. We got to get into having something yeah. massive that we're aiming yeah. at that is far enough in the future that yeah. we can. Then we got this. time to plan it. Yeah. And then there could be some possible grant. I don't know, but we chart. Like I mean, these court these CEOs and stuff are gonna because CEOs and the Saskatchewan CEO Summit. What a freaking great idea! I mean, it's limitless. And and no one no one will see it coming, and everyone will jump on board once you know once you set it up right, yeah. and they'll they won't know how much they're going to get zapped. <laughs> I know, in the province of Saskatchewan, in the valley. Yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah. I'll tell you, we had Emmanuel called me the other day and asked me if he could come to the Hub Factor. Where uh -huh. do I send the money? And I go, oh no, it's free. And that's where it's making me realize there's got to be a cost to that. We give a lot of data there. We've got to shorten that yeah, and turn it into something else a little bit and then use that as a tool that's bigger for the next step. For sure. So he came and he spent, it was only him and I and Sylvia. The ideas he had in the mind of business was unbelievable. And he said, what you guys just did with me and us sitting together for that period of time was a million times more than any counselor could do. He goes, you guys are total coaches. It took me to a whole new level because he's going through some girl relationship stuff, right? Uh -huh. He's brilliant in business and he's a type eight in the Enneagram. There's another type eight. Okay. Yeah. So Manuel came to the Hub Factor and you guys focused on him. And, and he says, where do I send doing a, 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 just for one person to yeah. okay. first time. So what we did is he sat in harmony because he goes, harmony just stood out for me. He said, I really want some harmony in my life, blah, blah, blah. And then we had time and then he moved over to flow because we took the same question. We didn't change the question. You just took the same question and sat at a different part of the table. And he goes, it was powerful and very deep. He said, so you guys are offering way too much for free i know yeah you know that and i said that's what elijah's told us we're just we're just trying to get people to get a taste of it because but we're not going to do the whole hub factor anymore we're shifting it we'll still have the hub factor we're just going to condense it down to 20 minutes half an hour so that they're just thriving for more really well maybe a half an hour well what's but what, what, do you, what do you mean? Like, how do you, how do you condense well, what that? We're thinking, this is just a thought I'm thinking out loud. Now we have, do you remember the relationships map? Yeah. Okay. We're thinking the start with the relationships map. Every component to your life has something to do with relationships. Okay. So you sent the relationship map to me and I had done a course with Lorianne way back when um, on the relationship map. Rob and I actually did it together. And you pick the relationship that you want to work on. And then you go and you sit. One's the observer, one's the listener, and one's the speaker. Okay. So we did that upstairs in my building years ago with Lorianne. And it was powerful. And then we did, her and I and Sylvia did this event. And it was a women's event. And we went and set up a table. I had a table doing the Enneagram test with people. Lorianne was doing conversations with people with the cards. People were waiting to come to our table. They were waiting to get sit down and come to our table. So I said to Sylvia, we planned that so freaking fast because Lorianne, no, you know, we got to wait until we have this together. I go, you freaking kidding me? Let's just get out there and do something so people know about us. Yeah. And it was freaking crazy good. But I mean, we don't even have that data anymore, like that information that we did there. But the relationships really got people thinking. So I, Sylvia and I are just talking out loud. And we're going, I don't have the relationships map. Do you have it? Can you put it up behind you? Um, Is it handy? I just can't find it offhand, like really quick. You have it in the- um, I'll, I'll just take a look. Okay, thanks. Oh yeah, I showed you. So in that map, I'm thinking, we just, we use something like that map instead of the 
map that we have, the hub factor map, because that's big. That's a tool that's going to be so powerful. We start with a relationship map, but we use the convo cards, convo killer cards, and the vote. Maybe we just use convo killer and the values cards. Okay. So when you look at it and you think, well, why just those? Because we want to introduce the conversation killers. They're totally non-threatening. What's the number one thing you do once you have two people together? You have communication, yeah. but you also have conflict. Yeah. Because each has their point of view. The bigger that group gets, the more conflict there can be. So we'll talk in that aspect, but you're going to sit there and you're going to pick which relationship comes to mind for you. And we'll have one. What kind of, there you go. What kind of relationships are out there? And people will go, so we're going to have like a relationship thing in the center of the table. On the outside of it will be just blank paper. And, and we're going to go, what kind of relationships are there? And people go, well, family. Okay, write it down. They write it down on this piece of paper around the circle of the table in the middle. They write it down. Then we go, now we want you to pick one of them, pull out a relationships map. We want you to pick one of those relationships that are on your mind right now that you feel is great or there's some challenges for you, whatever it is. And then we get them to pick the, re the relationship, number one, but then pick a values map and a convo killer. So all of a sudden they pull a convo killer at random so they can see often what's breaking what's breaking the communication and the, and the building of that relationship. Very simple. How does this conversation killer look to you? So it might not be something that really sticks out for them, but they're gonna learn about it. You know, overwhelm. Oh, who hasn't been over freaking whelmed? Right. And does it come up in conversation killers for people? Of course it does. And then start feeding them. And there's 30 cards there. They're going to start to learn those cards and really understand. And then we say, we offer, we will have you come in with a group of people. You can, we can come out to you within an organization, a company, the healthcare, because we've got a couple of nurses that have been coming and they're going, holy crap. I said, round up a group of people and bring them down. Right. This is what it'll cost you. Right. So I think. I like the bigger challenges and there's a big challenge in the healthcare sector right now. Like it's, it's sad. It's sad. So in the healthcare sector, what is it to find, you know, six people to come down and do this and start inviting them in groups so that it's not us trying to find all these individual people. For sure. They're bringing a group. For sure. That's They're the not way. bringing one friend. Yeah. They're bringing a group. Yeah, definitely. So that relationship map, social service, business. Um, what's the one right above intimate friendship and family? Yeah. So we use that because that is near and dear to everybody. Right. And then they're not sitting there putting out a question. It's just in their head. Okay. Yeah. Because once it gets to the question, writing it down on the hub factor, it's big. Like there's sometimes some major coaching work to do. Right. But that's when we want to start getting paid, man. Right. So you're you're shifting the hub factor to more higher value. You have yes. to get there to get there and yes. you're starting and you're identifying a better starting mechanism. Yeah. And that's because of our meeting, Sylvia and I with Emmanuel. Okay. Well, it's a, lots of testing, right? Lots of testing to find out yeah, what that's what it is. Yeah. It's just testing different people, philosophies, what they're thinking, how this is looking. And honestly, the four of us getting together is almost impossible. And there's no doubt getting together in person is different, Elijah. Yeah. Especially when you're building something like this. So Carrie knows she's busy. Yeah. Till the end of June, she's super busy. Yeah. And we yeah. understand that. Now, she's got her freaking gifts. And I know her and I, we're doing Dare to Be You. It's an excellent. How, how is, how's that going, by the way? So good. We have two women from Vancouver. How? So, so all right, think about how did we get the eight, nine women in there? Okay. Okay. Couple of them, two of them had been to the hub factor and they're friends of mine. Christy's mom is in there. Christy's mom got her friend on from Vancouver. I got uh, Penny, who was my life insurance lady. She donated getting one lady, someone that couldn't afford it. 
she wanted to just donate because she couldn't be there. And she bought a spot for her sister in Vancouver who just lost her husband. So that was Penny. She oh, phoned wow. me. Okay. She goes, there's something with your hub factor, you guys, that's going to go big to the world because Penny knows me. Right. And so really it was people linked to Christy and I. Okay. Like, you know, so Christy and Sylvia are in it. Okay. So they're, but they're in it just to be observers and to let us know, but they're partaking. Okay. And um, we, what we're doing is, Christy says to me yesterday, she goes, oh my God, I see how you ladies are doing this now in a group and it's magnificent. She goes, I could never vision how I could do this for a group because she's all about one-on-one, -on -one, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah. She wasn't realizing how powerful it could be in a group environment. It's spectacular. Like Carrie and I put a hell of a, a program together. Fantastic. And we planned that, pulling what she knows and the stuff she's done and pulling what I know, we brought that freaking together in two nights. She come down and stayed overnight and her and I worked on it all day and the next day for half a day and we got it done. And then she put it together in a format, like, cause she's a teacher. Right. She put it in a format and we pull the pieces and what we need and we co-facilitate the event. It's powerful. Awesome, yeah. yeah. So that's a start. Okay. And now, so yesterday we had a call with Christy and she says, you know, I'm going to suggest to you ladies, like you've got to do a sales pitch. And I said, you know, Christy, honestly, we have those ladies on there. Our last one was about value. So we had this wheel uh -huh. and it's just a wheel with different areas of your life. It's called the circle of life. Okay. So there's family, happiness and fun, spiritual health and wellness, money, community involvement, volunteering, career, personal development, and relationships. Oh, give those to me again, slower. Okay, so there's health and wellness, uh, money, community involvement, career, personal development. A little slower career. You know what I'll do? I'll take a picture of it and send it to you right now. Because okay. I've got a scanner on my phone. Okay. Because I got some notes on here, and I think you would like the notes on here. So I did... So when I talked, it was my turn to talk about the circle of life. I go, our circle of life moves by the energy of choices. I said, and I'm sure all of you want to live in harmony and balance. What would that look like for you? It doesn't mean that you're not going to live without challenges, but recognizing our awareness to all these areas of our life. And then when it went over to, so choices, we had it one to five or one to 10. Because I think, Elijah, you said, one to 10 was better because a bigger spread. Okay. So what they had to do is in the beginning, they, it was, they weren't satisfied, but on 10, they were totally, but Carrie had them do two different colors. Where do you feel you are and how important is that in your life? Okay. Oh, it, that was powerful. So then week two was about choices or uh, values. And then I just kind of said the same thing. Remember our circle of life moves by the energy of our values. How many of you live by your values? Or you, you go into conflict because your values don't match someone or you're not living with your internal values. So I went through a whole spiel. And then they had to place, we gave them 25 values. Some of the ladies had them all cut out before the course even started. Some of them didn't, They so we gave them half an hour. We said, we want you to do whatever. You can cut them out in circles, you can cut them out in squares, whatever you want. And we want, we only picked 25, Carrie and I, because we didn't want to go real big, okay. 25. And they had to put two values in each of these areas of their life. Oh, nice. And then we did breakouts. So they broke, broke out in twos to talk about how that value fat fit and different stuff like that. It was amazing. And then the next one, so I'll send this to you right now. Uh, just a sec. Okay, hopefully you can just blow it up and, okay, it's gone to your to messenger okay because instead of reading this but for an example elijah so personal development i put consist i call it kind of consistent growth instead of personal development because it i don't know sometimes i put beliefs habits patterns communication self-confidence adaptability so i just this is all on what i sent you okay so they're not just thinking personal development lifelong learning they're going beliefs habits patterns you know the things that are holding them back career career slash mission i put job passion entrepreneurship um wellness physical health exercise movement nutrition 
emotional health, anxieties, fears, depression, anger, shame, addiction, not just substance, but codependency, shopping. So I went, I elaborated and expanded on it on each of these. Yeah. Because I think people and doing points of view training, which said you work with both sides of the brain with pictures and words, made me really realize that we can't be so brief on some things. You need to elaborate a bit so people can expand their minds. Because Elijah, you said it. People get to the, they get to that um, certain scope of thinking. And it, their imagination and their mind doesn't allow them to go any further. Yeah. So that's why I expanded this because I'm going, so family, how do you get along in your family? Communication, how do you balance work, home, life, and family? How do you set boundaries? Do you make your decision? How do you make joint decisions in your family? Are you flexible? You know, just things for people to think about while you're saying the word family. Right. And I expanded. These are just quick notes. I had good notes on my computer while I was doing this. So Carrie's funny. Like Carrie's very funny. Like she can be a facilitator and she puts humor to uh -huh. what she does. It's just who she is. So she facilitates and starts out. And then she goes, now we've got Lori's going to be blah, blah, blah. So we usually give them kind of what went on for us in the last week, just a short little thing. Yeah. And then we go into an exercise. Then we do breakout. Then we come back in a group environment. Then we might have another exercise and maybe not because it's 90, it's two hours. Right. Do, do you use the, um, the, the planner at all? Well, you know, I haven't gotten into a habit of using it. I've, I think if I could go through, you know how I'm talking right now about all this? Yeah. If I could go through a whole process with you facilitating it and actually put the stuff on paper, I think it would really give me better. Right, because sometimes it's like redesign, re-engineering, you see what you did and then you map it and then you go, okay, this is what I'm doing kind of thing. Right. right? That's what I do a lot. Yeah. Um, and so, because you're trying to stretch, because at some point you want to train the trainer. Darn right. Um, let me, where's this? So what's your thought on a shifting our freebie a bit to that capacity? Well, the thing is you need a, an entry process yeah. that, that starts to pick up momentum. Yeah. So the hub factor kind of like is a, it, it can be the, the big crescendo, yeah. Um, but you've had it as a start. So you're, I, it, it, I, I was thinking like, just like we were saying about groups where if you invite a certain eight people or you, you invite eight people that sit down at the hub factor, again, that has high value, right? It, yeah. it's, it's like, you're getting a great conversation. So it, it's yeah. like, it's like yeah. mastering the art of facilitating great conversations. It, oh, <gasps> and to get known for that, like that's your that's, mastering that's, the art of facilitating great, great conversations. conversations. Oh my god! And like create a marketing campaign around that, right? Like okay. you want everyone in Yorkton wanting to come to the hub yeah. to participate in a great conversation. Yeah. yeah. And, and these are, and again, that lunar schedule of going, you know, which conversations when and who's facilitating it, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was the idea of the week of the four weeks and then structuring your time. So you go, okay, well, you know, who is doing what, where, where, and when, yeah. um, I don't know if you're looking at that, but yeah, well, that's exactly, that's exactly what we want to do. And I'm going, it's, it's a lot of work just getting stuff out there waiting for one person to show up. Let's say, let's get out there to organizations and out there to, work environments and anything and yeah. say bring a team of six yeah even if that's where it starts because i know eight i mean all you have to do is go to hr in some of these places yeah i mean especially at the hospital shouldn't be that tough no con considering the the size of your town and <laughs> yeah you know you, you know most of the people so i i think that you just got to set up your structure for how they're going to come in and and what yeah. you give them and all the tools are there, right? Like, I mean, it's, yeah. um, I know we're using the time a lot differently than I, I did with Sylvia. Sorry. Um, no, that's okay. 
Um, but I think you might want to look at what I'm doing with Sylvia from your own point of view, because we're taking, we're looking at, and this could be your discovery process, but looking at a process where you take seven conversation types. Oh, okay. And I don't know if you want to quickly do a, a quick process here. Yeah, yeah. Um, choose seven conversation types that you love that are just like. So grab the cards. Yeah. Okay, the ones I love. <clears throat> like if you had to design a process yeah. and you yeah. and you said, okay, I want these seven in them. Yeah. Seven of them. Okay, I think I got two, four, six. Okay, well, these are the seven I picked. I didn't go through the whole deck, but these really hit me. Okay. So I've got visioning. Okay. Sharing. Okay. Connecting. Okay. Designing. Okay. Storytelling. Okay. Social. Okay. I don't know if that's, is that a great card? That's a meta conversation. Okay, so I'll get a different one. But then it says to share information in a social context. Let's leave it because that's it's a and then motivational. Okay. So those are the those are the there's um, one more. Huh? One more. Oh. I got visioning, sharing, connecting, designing, storytelling, motivation. And social. But should I change that social? Yeah. Just because um just because. Um, fate, advocating, directing, focusing. Um, uh, It's either going to be reflection or knowledge sharing. Both of those stand out for me, but guidance. I thought I'd pick another orange one and only because uh, the social was orange. Okay. Well, which one? Guidance then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. now you want to put them in the seven step pulse model. Okay. Uh, you want to, sh you can uh, do a random. I'll do it random. Definitely. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm just putting them in a, a seven in a row. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I gotta, let me take a deep breath. Oh, okay. Okay. What you got? Okay, so I'll flip them over. Designing. Okay. Storytelling. Okay. Connecting. Okay. Visioning. Okay. Sharing. Okay. Guidance. Okay. And motivational. Motivational, okay. So now uh, choose a, a value for each one. Oh, okay. This is kind of fun. <laughs> it's funny. We have five minutes left. And we do the whole exercise. I know. Uh, don't worry. We could do it in five. <laughs> <laughs> We're fast. So I am just going to pick these at random. Okay. 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 Because I'm just going to trust the universe. Okay. And the gentleman in front of me that Something speaks through you. I, I you're gonna laugh because I go, I'm sure a UFO dropped him off because he's so brilliant. <laughs> I hope you're okay with that. That's okay. My son, they saw UFOs out at the Aurora Center. So designing is acceptance. Okay. Storytelling is compassion. Woo. Nice. Connecting is brilliance. Okay. Visioning is prudence. Okay. How's that sound? It's good. Okay, perfect. Sharing is authenticity. 
Guidance is cleanliness. And motivational is generosity. <laughs> Good. Okay, now let's, uh, for the designing, pick a choice lens. A choice? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, also, you, you want to have a central intention. Of oh. This process is like a process you will be taking people through. What is your main pro? What is your main intention for that process? Well, the the main intention for this process is for people to go through it to get them involved and wanting more of what the visionary hub has to offer. Okay, that's eh, that's too that's a, too that's big. A, week, a little weak. Too weak? Yeah. Okay. Oh, why don't we use I want this to be what we're going to work with through the next year to have the Saskatchewan CEO event. Oh, so this is the way to bring them on board the CEO event? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, on board. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. good on board the ceos oh wow okay that's the sask ceos okay so uh choice lens at designing yeah choice okay i am doing totally at random again okay you want me i'll tell you what it is frequency fence Okay. Why are you laughing? That's a very funny choice, Lens. Is it? Um, okay, uh, next one is a flow wheel. And that is interpretation. Okay. Connecting. Next, next is a synergy, synergy lens. Four. Visioning is expression. So this is a synergy wheel like connecting? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Connecting, yeah. And then visioning is expression. Oh, no, 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 no. No, connecting, it's a synergy lens. Oh, so duh. Did I use the right one? I used only choice for designing, right? Yeah, okay. So storytelling too. <laughs> storytelling needs to be a flow lens. Is the flow. There we go. That feels better. I don't know about that frequency fence. I don't quite understand it, but we'll figure it out. Okay, storytelling from the flow lens. Oh, this one keeps wanting to pop out. Block. Block? Okay. And that card kept falling out. I actually was choosing connection. Uh -huh. But as I choose, I, as I chose it, this one fell out. Which you prefer? I prefer connection. Okay, we'll take the block out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then connecting is also a synergy. Yeah. Conversation. No, that's flow. So oh, synergy okay. lens for connecting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyone watching this will just think we're mad. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is just. Okay, so connecting yeah. is synergy lens, is operations. Okay. Hmm. That's okay. And then visioning is a skirt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the harmony card for that one is national media, because that's what it's going to hit. Look what they're doing in Saskatchewan. And then sharing. Sharing um, synergy. Yes. Synergy lens. It's a synergy, yeah. And that one is, oh, conflict resolution. Kind of cool, actually. Okay. Guidance. That's a flow? That's a flow, yeah. Uh, flow. And the flow is, cleanliness is a value, mission. Okay, that's good. I like that. And, and then the, motivational choice lens choice back to choice and desire 
Okay. Okay. So within seven minutes, you just did your first uh, process, having a spell, you know, going from the inner you to the outer you to the synergy to the community, back to synergy, back out of you, right? So you've got the seven step process. You've got a combo type. Each one of those is an hour long course. Each one. Each one of right. those is an hour long course. Yeah. And your goal, you need to print out seven of the of the one hour session planners. Okay. And begin to fill in each one of the, like at the top, it says, what's the primary combo type? Yeah. So print seven, then lay them out. And then you're going to start to see this is your process to onboard people oh. into, the, into the conference. So it's like they have a course to get ready to go into the into this thing. You know, Elijah, I have to tell you, like I've been really like, oh, I things are just like coming together. But I this really gets me excited because it's a bigger picture of all the work that's been done to take it to a bigger to something bigger. Yeah. This is the thing. You're right. Talk to those CEOs. I've been a CEO. I know the pressure. Just because you own your own business doesn't mean life is a bowl of cherries. And then at the conference, they'll all get a set of cards. They'll go yeah. through some processes. They'll, you know, whatever it is, we'll, we'll, we'll make the conference, the summit pretty amazing. But wow. And then they're going to turn around and go back and they're, we're going to do one for the HR department of these organizations. And then sure. they're going to send all their HR people. Yeah, this will be the the mega launch for Visionary Hub, and everything leading after that, you won't know what to do with all the business. But I up, know up until then, it's just again, it's preparation, right? Yeah, it's prep. You're right. Because okay. I think I think we need at least a year to get ready. <laughs> That's for sure. No, I agree, and I think in a year, people will really be ready because of what's going on in the world. Yeah. So now I've got to go get print out seven one hour session planners. I'm trying to think of that thing. I'm, I'm getting Sylvia to get every map and put them in a file folder. So I can just go and grab one. Yeah. Because I Definitely. just don't even like hunting for this stuff. For sure. Okay. Well, I'm very glad that we're doing this because I said to the team last week in our team meeting, no, we were sitting here and Carrie wasn't here, but Christy was. And I said, we're talking about charging hundred bucks an hour coaching, whatever it be. And I said, I want to know how many of you have coaches. How many of you have coaches? We're expecting people to come and pay a hundred bucks an hour for a coach. How many of you have coaches? Sylvia goes, well, I don't. And then all of a sudden she goes, I do. I have Elijah. And that's just when Carrie and Christy have give, had done, had stopped their coaching with you. Yeah. So I don't care what anybody says. If you're not going to be coached, why do you expect that you can just go out there and be that coach? Well, especially with these tools. <laughs> with these tools that's what i mean yeah with these tools so again they were all thrilled to be doing work with you when the hub was paying for it which has no money but once it was their own responsibility sylvia and i've been forking out our own cash because we're going to the top man yeah so that just tells me a little bit it's just a little you know yeah it's money i don't care it's a freaking hundred bucks an hour four hundred dollars a month Oh, yeah. for something so big and so new and so magnificent. Just okay. saying. At some point, they'll realize that uh, when 100,000 people are on my waiting list. Mm -hmm. um, you got it. Because that's what's going to happen, Elijah. I know. So I can imagine, I can imagine you organizing yourself. Like you're pretty damn organized, so no big deal. But you're like... It's going to be powerful. You only have so much time in a day, young man. How old are you, Elijah? 57. Are you? Perfect age. Also, another thing, I found some old paperwork from work Lorianne did with us. And it's an old business plan that she had created. And she had Ian Dakers in there. Is that your other name? Yeah, that's my government name. I did not know that. I remember seeing it years ago, but not really knowing that. And then you shifted it or redid it to Elijah Ignacio. Yeah. Because Elijah is very biblical, as is Emmanuel. Yeah. Yeah. We and I got Noah as a, a Noah. As a, I know. Uh, That's what I mean. It's kind of cool. It's really cool. Okay, I will um I will do this. Sylvia will know which map we're talking about, right? The one hour session now. Yep. Take you through that hour. Yeah. Okay. Are Thank we you. are we meeting as a team later today or is that 
Um, Do you think or no? No, I don't think we need to today because her and I are doing a flow lens, flow map with a young lady that comes to the hub. Okay. And then I have a, a client coming and then I have to be home because I'm doing a family new dawn program with the Aurora Center. Okay. Two of us, my grandson and I, it's part of the process at the Aurora Center for family. Okay. Yeah. And just maybe take a look at what Lindsay did and show her what you did and just kind of compare the paths. And again, you can take Carrie and um, we can take them through, it. Through, through those processes if you okay. want. You know, that's okay. that's what it's all about. Yeah, um, that's what it's all about. I think okay. that's a great idea. Okay, um, you said Lindsay, you must have been thinking of little Lindsay's mom, Sylvia. Yes, you said Lindsay, isn't that cool? <laughs> Lindsay Camp phoned me the other day. Are you oh, doing work did. with her? She, she phoned me. But I was in a meeting, so I didn't answer it, and she never left a message. She got in touch with me a while back. We had one chat, and then she disappeared. So Same tell, tell me. her. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, tell her to get in touch with me if she wants to. I will. There's another type eight. She was really excited, and then she just disappeared. So I don't know what happened. That's what she did with me, too. And then she just kind of disappeared. So I'll touch in with her. Okay. Okay. Bye, Elijah. You have a great day. It's 12-11. All right. Bye.